Hello and welcome to episode 143 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is May 6th, 2019. I am Rollo McFlugel and with me is Slappy Jones 2. We are both from McFlugel.com. Show notes page for this episode will be McFlugel.com slash 143. And be sure to check out our sponsor, LibertyMugs.com, where you can buy Liberty-themed mugs and shirts and maybe a couple other things. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Slappy, and he's going to introduce our episode topic. All right. So today we're going to talk about an article that was on Peter Schiff's blog at shiftgold.com. Uh, it was written today. Yeah, today. Uh, May 6th. May the 6th. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Schiff Gold is the author. I don't believe that is Peter Schiff, but I, I, it's probably someone who works with him. I think me and Rallo, we discussed that beforehand and uh, agreed on that. So why don't we go through it? It's a short yeah, article. Let's, let's give a little bit of a backstory for this. Um, sure. Because this is, this is going to be another Bitcoin episode. <laughs> yeah. The title and, is Bitcoin is a replacement for gold. Not so much. Yeah. So Peter Schiff is, is well known in libertarian Austrian economic circles is, is being a pretty good bulldog for us. In a lot of things, he's great. Uh, oh yeah, um, I think a lot of us grew up. I mean, watching. his dad's a hero. Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of us grew up uh, in libertarian economic circles, following Peter Schiff. And I've read one. I read Real Crash. I thought it was a good book. Um, and he's got a lot of good videos out there, and and you know, it's a pretty good stalwart for for this stuff. But <laughs> he is not a fan of Bitcoin. He's a gold bug. Uh, yeah, he's a gold bug, and you know maybe he maybe part of that is maybe he doesn't like Bitcoin because his uh, the way he makes the money is involved in gold. So I right. think so that's, that's into consideration. Cut. Sure, but that doesn't mean he's wrong. Right, right. It's just a thing to to put out there and and acknowledge. Yeah, but um, you know, there's plenty of people that have a lot of incentive to to pump Bitcoin because that's where their their money's in. And that's where their business is. So it, it's kind of six of one, half dozen of the other. Yep. So let's not use that as, because uh, that is not an argument to say that, <laughs> to use that as a criticism of it. Let's, let's go after what he says. So he was, he tweets about it every once in a while. And, and what's presented in this blog post were things that he were, was saying in the tweet. And even before we, uh, this article was published, we, we were talking about uh, covering the, uh, the tweets that he made. So now, you know, shiftgold.com did a, a real solid and just kind of, kind of put it all it, together in an article yeah, for us. Yeah. What, what a bunch of, even though I think they're wrong about Bitcoin, I think they're great guys. So, and also this kind of dovetails well, because a while ago we started doing, a, I think we only did two of them, a little quick hit, quick hit things where we went on uh, live on YouTube and, and recorded. Oh yeah. We should do that again. Yeah, we should. I, I, I like doing that. But there was one, and it's linked in the show notes page, called uh, Gold Failed, Now It's Time for Bitcoin. And um, I made the argument that there are certain flaws in gold that are exploitable that made it so that it could no longer f uh, serve as sound money and ended up uh, having central banks kind of take it over and then replace it with fiat money uh, and just, you know, unbacked by anything. So the reason that we are here today is not because of – it's it's because of the flaws in gold. That's why. That's not how my talk went. No? No. I thought we were here today for another reason or because of another reason. Yeah. Yes. I don't know what you're talking about. It was a joke and it went over your head or it was a bad joke, but I have four right. kids and just figured out how they got here and it was had nothing to do with the Federal Reserve. Yeah. Yeah. That went over my head. I don't even know if I even get it, but <laughs> nobody you does. Know what, you know what, Slappy? Edit that out. Edit it out. No, we're not. You know what, Slappy? Leave the jokes to the professional here. All right. Because all of mine land every single time. And they always have. Yes. And one day on this podcast, we will tell, you will tell an Amerigo Vespucci joke. 
I am the I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that's <laughs> ever done that. So I would I I am the expert in Amir Gov Vespucci jokes. You've told all of them. You're the only you own a hundred percent of the Amir Gov Vespucci jokes. Yep. And you were actually the uh technically because I think the joke has only been told one time. Had to. And you were the uh you were the sole audience of that joke. Yeah. But that's that's a story for another time. Not for today. No. Um, so what I was saying about Cole was that the reason that we we have um, these issues with money and, and awful governments that are able to exploit the money system that we have now is because gold ended up having certain flaws in it that, that made it exploitable. And I, when I say that, I don't mean to say that gold's bad. I mean, it, it served its purpose extremely well for a very long time as money and was one of the reasons, really the main reason that we had like tremendous economic booms when, uh, uh, when gold was money. So when we say, or at least I'll speak for myself, when I say that gold ended up being a failure, I don't mean to say that to, like to, to, to critique and, and say it's it's bad all the way around and throughout its history. Uh, and even still today, it has a lot of useful functions. And so keep that in mind when we're going through this, that we're not like, I don't think Schiff is wrong about a lot of the stuff he's about to do, because even though I think he's wrong about Bitcoin, he's a really smart guy who's uh, right yeah, he knows, yeah, he knows what he's doing. And uh, uh, yeah, when, we, when I read this article earlier today, commented to Rallo, like, yeah, I think I agree with almost everything here just not uh not the conclusion yeah i just end up disagreeing when, as soon as he talks brings bitcoin into what he's saying right right everything else is pretty good so um but, i and, think and, even, and uh, okay we'll get to it we'll get to this one point i want to make but okay you want me to start reading because i think it's a pretty good article which is i guess not normally what we do we usually have an article which we are of course we are criticizing this one but uh, a little different because we we really like peter schiff so, all right, I'll get started and uh, we'll comment as we go. So here we go. A recent video ad produced by a digital currency asset company titled, quote, Drop Gold, end quote, created some waves on social media last week. The ad encourages investors to drop gold from their portfolios and replace it with digital currencies such as Bitcoin. In a digital world, Gold shouldn't weigh down your portfolio, the ad proclaims. So let me, for those that have not, and I'll try to remember to put this in the show notes. I forgot to do that so far. But um, for those that haven't seen it, I forget what the company, obviously it's a company that's starting to sell Bitcoin and, and maybe some other stuff related to it. But they show people walking around the city carrying gold. Right, because it's very heavy. Yeah, have you seen Have you seen the ad? No, I haven't. Okay. But they, yeah, it's very heavy and it's and it's tough. Bulky, it's and, yeah, and it's yeah. almost like it, it. It's shown as like almost like a ball and chain, right? And so people are trying to like drag it around and and it's difficult and it's obviously people kind of look nervous walking around with with uh, bars of gold because it's people can see it and and maybe they can be uh, attacked and and have their gold stolen from them and and Bitcoin serves a purpose that. Uh, or serves a function that, that kind of relieves, relieves you of that. And it makes uh, transferring your wealth a whole lot cheaper and quicker right. and easier and, and uh, more securely in a lot of ways, but let's, so I thought, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know that I necessarily agree with the, uh, cause I, I might've even watched this ad with, with it on mute with the audio on mute so i might have missed stuff that they were saying i thought the ad was pretty cl a clever way to show the uh how oh. bitcoin it could be superior to gold yeah. i mean it's marketing too i mean they're gonna right. have a point uh, right. but it is not fall i mean gold is heavy if you were going to yeah. bring someone uh, you're going to pay for something with a lot of money you're going to be carrying around a lot of gold yep or you're going to pay someone to do it and i mean we've seen armored vehicles and it can't be cheap Yep, and what happens when you constantly have to rely on a third party to, to manage your gold for you is you end get up... Get stolen and you get pieces of paper. Yes, so... Hmm. Um, all right, shall I continue? 
Sure. But is Bitcoin really a replacement for gold? While the drop gold ad may seem clever and cute, cryptocurrencies aren't a replacement for gold. Okay. Uh. <laughs> and that's the end of the yeah. article. So do you I have, have anything? Yeah, I have, to, I, have, I have to do my libertarian actually here. Yeah. And I, it just kind of, as those that have listened to our show or know us at all, or at least me, is that uh, it's it's Bitcoin or bust for me. So um, I, I don't like <coughs> I, I don't I don't even like using the word cryptocurrencies because it, it gives credence to the other stuff out there that I think is kind of worthless. So that's kind of where this gets difficult to um, to kind of tread through, because as we're going to see later on that I don't really blame guys like Schiff for having criticisms of Bitcoin because of all these other altcoins out there. They're just junk. Um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's just, it just complicates the argument when you have to deal with, because I just want to talk about Bitcoin, but when you have to talk about cryptocurrencies, then you have to try to like explain that like, well, no, these all, these other ones I don't think are, valuable for anything and i think a couple episodes ago we kind of gave a, a rundown about the uh about the security so maybe yeah, yeah it was episode 141 so two weeks go, ago right yeah uh, 141 if you want to want to go and hear a little bit about why we think that uh these other cryptocurrencies don't stack up at all to bitcoin because of the proof of work and and how how well bitcoin is secured against everything else so go check that out but uh, all right, I'll try to let you get more than a sentence in. Sure, because uh, gotcha. the article does or the post does continue. Okay, the most obvious ludicrous claim made by the ad is that gold has no utility. This reminds me of CNBC commentator Jim Leventhal saying that gold as that gold as no use as a metal a few months ago. Okay, I didn't hear Jim Leventhal say that. That's my little side note okay back in fact gold has a wide range of uses from making jewelry to high-tech applications that's one characteristic that makes gold ideal as money while the price of gold has fluctuated it's never been zero and it never will be gold has intrinsic value due to its utility did you do you want to talk about that about um, intrinsic value and about uh industrial uses of gold because i think that's an overstated uh, aspect of, of well, money. people say that all the time, um, and they, they love do. to say gold has intrinsic value because it has, um, you know, what, what is that? well, it certainly has value as jewelry and high tech applications. But the second something else comes around, or another technology, or you know, some other metal that's cheaper to use that maybe is going to be more efficient than gold, then gold wouldn't be used for that anymore. Well, the other, yeah, and the other thing is that how how much of the price of gold is tied to it's, it's tied industrial, to it, right. industrial applications. For everything I hear, and I don't have, you know, a, a good stati whatever statistic or, or good information, but I mean, if you look it up, you can find plenty of, of information about this, about how much of the price of gold is impacted by its industrial uses, and it's not that much. I mean, if it were, then we wouldn't have people – uh, the the vast majority of gold wouldn't be held by people as a store of value. It would be used in industrial in industrial purposes because they would they would demand they would demand more uh, more money more whatever in exchange for it. So, I mean, the fact that gold is the vast majority held as as a way to to store your to store value. I mean, that kind of shows that um, that's the main driver for its value. And, and this is kind of an appeal to the, uh, what's it like the regression theorem by Mises. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's just a way that he was, they were able to explain commodity money that, well, th people had to have a use for something first. I mean, uh, when, when we talk about Bitcoin and how it's going to become a money and the properties of it, it's, uh, a, a, a collectible, um, that it's a store of value, it's a means of exchange, and it's a unit of account. There has to be that first step of like it getting it, like, using yeah, it, and getting it, having a reason to hold it, and right? People, and we say this all the time: like people didn't like 
dig a hunk of gold out of the ground and just be like, oh, I'm going to use this as money. I'm going to go exchange this for a cow. Like, yeah, especially yeah. because like raw gold nuggets aren't necessarily that pretty looking. <laughs> right. So uh, I think that's I think I mean, it had to have some money. use before it became right. money. Right. And then and then as as they start using it and they start realizing that it is pretty uh, they start understanding its properties better and that it's useful for other things that that is money people that, will want yeah I could, right then, then the demand starts shooting up and that's right. like and i say this to people all right like bitcoin doesn't have any other value than as being money you know, money and so what i mean money is is maybe the most important or one of the most or it's at least the foundation of everything else in uh, in society for being able to, being able to uh, improve the quality of life and and create and build wealth and and help uh, determine where resources are going. So if you just had a thing that only functioned as money, like I don't understand how that's why well, that's bad. Right, and they, and and this is where the intrinsic value thing ties in because a little bit like, well, never never will go to zero. Well, if gold lost its it completely lost its value as money, and it just went to be being used for industrial purposes, it's it's only going to be worth a fraction of what it is. I'm say it'd be effective. I mean, so you, it would have, yeah. You'd so have are a you lot gonna, less. Yeah, if if you have, you know, and I'm just I'm just making up numbers for the sake of argument, but if if gold lost its value down to 0.1%, are you really going to be like thrilled that you have 0.1% versus zero? Because it's kind of basically the same thing at oh, that point. Say 10 per, I mean, if it went down 90%, that'd be a lot. Right. People would, yeah. If, if it, if it lost another 10%, it, it, it wouldn't be that. Yeah. Which is, I don't, I haven't followed the price of gold. I don't know how much it has fluctuated over the last couple of years. So, yeah. And another th another thing too is with an intrinsic value. That term it's there's a lot of meanings to that term. Yeah. And, We've written uh, about that before. Yeah, and I would I mean the typical argument that we've made is that, you know, value is subjective. So there's nothing you can say to be like this is always going to be just because it's a pr it's a property of its uh of its existence, therefore it has to have value. No, a value is assigned by people and and their preferences. And if you had a, let's say, you know, some time from now we start mining asteroids and find, find uh, these asteroids just filled with gold that uh, make the, the earth supply of gold seem like a piece of a grain of sand on a beach. You really think it's going to retain its, uh, right. Gold have the value, that has value is no longer there. Right. And anyway, intrinsic value has a, a financial definition that just kind of like doesn't have to do with like your uh, capital equipment or something that you you know you're going to be able to use it for whatever mm -hmm. you're doing. So I would just be careful with throwing the term intrinsic value around because it's it's easy to say it meaning one way and then people take it meaning another thing. Cool. I'll continue. Yep. In a tweet, Peter Schiff noted the irony of the ad, quote, the ultimate irony in the hashtag drop gold campaign is that you can't mine Bitcoin without using hashtag gold. This is just one of the many utilities of gold that Bitcoin promoters deny exist. But while they overlook gold's obvious utility, they ascribe utility to Bitcoin where none exists, end quote. To say that gold has no utility... Um and Bitcoin does is simply <laughs> a ridiculous assertion. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And, and this is, again, I, I think that I don't see a lot of people. I see over, I see plenty of people overplaying uh, that gold is, is kind of useless. Yeah. I don't, I don't see people saying, gold I, I was going to say, I don't really see that. Right, I see people overplaying the uh, the unimportance of gold now, because it is still very, very important. Um, 
but what I what I will say is that when when there are Bitcoin people that see Peter Schiff criticizing Bitcoin and promoting gold, there's a tendency to be reactionary and say like, no, Bitcoin's great, gold's stupid. Yep. And it's like, don't let someone's bad arguments against what you like kind of cloud your judgment about about the alternatives. Did I mention there was a, a a good reference for this talking about how to how to view gold is episode 69 of the Stefan Levera podcast. It just dropped like a week or two ago. Had uh Stefan had Safadina Moose on and it was about well the title the episode title was called How Governments Could Kill Bitcoin and Bitcoin Scenarios. And they talk about gold and what its current value is and you know gold is still a tremendous store of value and let's not understate the fact that gold is has served its purpose even though it's kind of failed as money now or at least i would make the argument that it's failed i think as money. i don't know how you could make any other argument we don't use right. it as money it's not yeah. money but it's still a very good store of value and it is it is very very liquid and if and I'm kind of summarizing, trying to summarize a lot of the points that Safedine uh, made in this episode. And if you had a, a, a situation where the government's collapsed, or at least the monetary system's collapsed, uh, right now you would you would be better off with gold than Bitcoin uh, because of the liquidity of it. Uh, you, you're not going to have people uh, accepting bitcoin as much as they would be willing to accept gold right now mm -hmm. but that's where we are right now that's where the technology is right now it doesn't mean that uh that bitcoin's a failure right now it just means that the world's not quite there yet to to accept the new technology just like any other technology that is uh that has replaced something else it's not like it, it, you don't wake up one morning and and this new thing's invented and, and everyone adopts it um so it's just saying that there's there's obviously utility. I was going to say I don't know value. that. I think I think if anyone's saying it has no utility, they have to be talking about it as money because it's just absurd to say there's no utility for gold. Right. Um, and, and the other thing I want to say too is that first line in that tweet is the ultimate irony in the hashtag drop gold gold campaign is you can't mine Bitcoin without using gold. Um. I don't understand why that's an irony because. Well, if you're saying gold has no utility, Bitcoin does, but you uh, can't get Bitcoin without gold. Well, then obviously Bitcoin, has, I mean, gold has utility. Okay. I think that's what he's getting at. Yeah, that makes sense then. I, I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. Um, although I guess it's kind of, uh, that's the whole point of what he's saying. I think, but, so, I, mean, I think that's it. But just because you're using like, I, yeah, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because I don't think he's that dumb to say. Yeah, he's not. Uh, uh, but anyway, make your point anyway. I want to hear, no, hear I, what you were going to say. I, what I want to say is that just because someone's you know saying using gold to mine Bitcoin doesn't – well, one, it's saying that they value the Bitcoin more than they value the gold. Otherwise, they wouldn't be trading the gold to destroy electricity to uh, to mine Bitcoin in hopes to get some back. Um uh, so they, they clearly uh, value the Bitcoin more than they do the gold. And anyway, just looking at, at history, any time that, that money has changed what it is, like you still need to – There's a, like I said a few minutes before, there's a transition period. Mm -hmm. And so you still need to use what is currently money in order to do what you're doing to, to create the new stuff. So it's – I mean, even when the United States stopped making silver coins, um, it was probably a short, as we, you know, a short uh, transition that people started saving the silver coins, but they were still spent. I've gotten silver coins in my change. Mm -hmm. I still, I haven't ha gotten one in years, but I still check every time I get change. Right. And even, uh, and, and, and Thier's Law or Tears Law addresses this that, in a free market scenario that good money drives out bad money because people are going to want to if if you perceive gold as being less valuable long term than bitcoin you're going to have a one a tendency to hold bitcoin and not spend it for payments and you want to get rid of the the thing that you see as less valuable so right now i mean we're 
really not using gold to i i don't know that anyone's i'm sure it's possible but i don't know that anyone's actually using gold to mine bitcoin i'm pretty sure they're using their unless fiat yeah unless but he's talking still, about it being in the miner like in your computer oh oh yeah another thing i didn't even pick up so that's fine i mean sure oh I, once again this thing this still the thing still applies you're willing yeah, yeah. to use use up the gold in order to uh to trade it um for bitcoin right to uh, point. yeah i kind of lost the train of thought i had but uh I don't know. Um, it's kind of going to be the same thing I was saying anyway, just a little bit different. Okay. Well, I will continue. A World Gold Council points out a number of other factors working in gold's favor as an investment, arguing convincingly that cryptocurrencies are no replacement for gold. Gold is less volatile, has more liquid market, trades in an established regulatory framework, has a well understood role in an investment portfolio, has little overlap with cryptocurrencies on many sources of demand and supply, is a safe haven investment. The World Gold Council notes that the gold market trades at $150 billion a day, almost 100 times that of Bitcoin, and gold pricing remains consistent across exchanges in all forms. So do you have any, I'll let you jump in. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, most of those points I'm, I'm fine with, but yeah. I mean, how long has Bitcoin or has gold been around versus the 10 years that Bitcoin's been there? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, we get, we get, he, had, he addresses that in a little bit, but no, that's exactly when um, we were talking earlier when we were texting, I, I, that was kind of what I was pointing to, to be like, yeah, I mean, I agree with all this. Yeah, but that's so, not so like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But um, what he's missing is that he I don't know that he just has decided to not even look at it since he, he there's a tendency. Oh, you just have this digital asset that you can create with nothing. I'm not even going to that's stupid. I'm not even going to look at it. Um, so maybe he doesn't understand. I, I'm sure he doesn't understand the technical aspects of Bitcoin because we can look at the monetary properties of Bitcoin and compare them to gold and say that Bitcoin has better properties and therefore yeah. will replace it as a store of value. And eventually it's not even replacing it as money because it's not money, but will become money. So that's why we can say as a long-term investment or speculation that Bitcoin is going to way outperform gold. And we, we can confidently or I'll confidently say that. Um, obviously, nothing. Yeah, that's what I believe. But nothing I mean, is guaranteed. But I do think that when you compare the properties of Bitcoin versus gold, Bitcoin will win in the long run. Right. Um, but, but yeah, whatever. Today, I mean, like if if you're worried that there's a collapse, I don't think you're wrong to buy some gold. Right. Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like we said, it, it's it's a lot more liquid now. Right. Um, and everybody knows advantage. what gold is. It's had the advantage of thousands of years of head start. Yeah. Which is, you know, it is what it is. So Bitcoin's got a, a, a tough. It's where we are. Right. Um, but like, all right, let's 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 talk about where gold was 10 years into its discovery. Was it was it not volatile? Did it have a liquid market? Did it trade? My guess is it was a rock like every other rock. Yeah. Did it have a well understood role in the investment portfolio? Was it a safe haven investment? I don't think so. Um, I don't. I, I don't know to say how long it took for those things to happen, but it was over. A, I know it was over a very long period of time. Um. So it's just the the shame that Schiff just kind of dismisses Bitcoin without seeing the. Uh, you know what 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 uh properties it has that that could be really an incredible thing yeah so uh i will continue unless you have something else you want to add nope okay the world gold council also addresses the utility of gold pointing out that its demand is diverse coming from jewelry investment technology and central banks Cryptocurrency demand is highly speculative or investment related as there is little proof of its use as a medium of exchange. 
Gold has a track record dating back to around 600 BC. Bitcoin has only existed for 10 years. Uh, again, I mean, we talked about the jewelry and and uh, yeah. industrial purposes versus central bank and, and and the age of it and right. So yeah, I mean, again, he's overplaying the jewelry investor and technology aspects of of gold as it relates to its price. Um, and I, I mean, I, I'm pretty I'm sure that people you were using gold in the beginning because they they polished it up and it looked nice. And so it was very speculative that way and wasn't useful as a medium of exchange. And I mean, I don't know. I think Bitcoin's pretty useful as, uh, or it, it can be used as a medium of exchange. And I mean, it's certainly better. Uh, there was something, there was like millions of dollars moved recently in Bitcoin in a Bitcoin transaction. I think it was like in the tens, might've been in the tens of millions of dollars. And, I'm pretty sure that the cost of the transaction was like less than $2. Not bad. And assuming that they got that in the next block, that was, you know, at most about 10 minutes. And then, you know, you can, you can trust that a Bitcoin transaction is secure after six confirmations. So someone moved, let's just say for the sake of the argument, $10 million for $2 and it cleared, well, cleared in 10 minutes, but they were confident that they now were the owners of that money or the, that those funds in an hour. Um, I don't know how much off the top of my head it would cost to move $10 million of gold or uh, how much it would cost, but I know it doesn't come close to sniffing those numbers of Bitcoin. Like, so, and the other thing too is that people don't walk around with bars or hunks of gold and to buy something of, of smaller value, they scratch off a couple of flakes of gold to pay for it. Um, like <laughs> gold needs other, uh, a lot of other layers and these other layers that make it useful as a medium of exchange are the things that make it exploitable. Right. And that's that's one of the flaws of it. So it's it's like these weird weird kind of arguments that that mix and match stuff and kind of Frankenstein the different use cases of of Bitcoin and and versus gold and so it, it makes it difficult to kind of tread through this stuff. And the other thing that makes it difficult is that you have all these people comparing Bitcoin to Visa and I really blame the uh the people that were that are arguing that, that are kind of anti-Bitcoin, trying to argue for uh, bad scaling solutions, but Bitcoin is not competing with Visa, or at least the on-chain base layer of Bitcoin is not competing with Visa because Visa is like a, is is layers on top of other layers in the way the money system works. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is comparable to settling gold across central banks. And that does not happen. You, you do not safely and securely own your gold within an hour of you initiating the transaction for uh, the equivalent of dollars. So even when uh, demand for transactions spike up, and let's say you have to spend fifty dollars for a bitcoin transaction um i mean if you're only making a transaction worth 25 dollars and you're spending 50 bucks <laughs> on the transaction i kind of wonder why you're doing that yeah but um but if you're moving like larger chunks of money around i mean that still is, is a great deal compared to what you would have to to spend in uh something you know in gold uh even even wire wiring fees aren't cheap right um so it's just it, it, it's it's just tough because there's wh whenever we talk about bitcoin and gold and fiat it's never apples to apples we're, we're kind of mashing all of these different uses and layers and 
scale ways to scale all together and and it just confuses the issue so hopefully hopefully my little monologue there helps clean it up or clear it up somehow yeah well i think you're gonna like the next part oh yeah this is my favorite part yeah so i will read it there's also the issue of supply while the supply of a given cryptocurrency is constrained, nothing can prevent a new a new cryptocurrency from being launched, devaluing those already in existence. As Peter put it, scarcity is not enough. There must also be real value. They is also this is also wait what is that a typo? Some, yeah, there, I think there's some typos on this, but yeah, this is also an infinite supply of or there is also an infinite infinite supply of cryptocurrencies. So they are not really scarce at all. Yeah. Do you want to? Well, I mean, that's kind of what we talk about on the show fairly often. Right. Why one of them is going to win out. Um, right. And and one is not fungible with the other ones. Right. So just adding new ones does not decrease the value of another one. It could. I mean, it could. Not, not necessarily. I mean, but, if you go on to any of these exchanges and look at all the coins that are out there, there's very few that are taking away from Bitcoin. Right. But well, you could make the case that if those other ones disappeared, like, would that money stay in "quote unquote" cryptocurrencies and there therefore go to Bitcoin? Probably. Um, but the main, I, I don't think it's it's like a drastic thing. Right. Um, and if Bitcoin was money and someone basically copied Bitcoin code and created a new one, do you think that would now devalue your Bitcoin? Right, because I could do that right now. Right. At, uh, at almost like no cost to me, I could create a copy of Bitcoin and send it out and try to get people to mine it and invest it and, and, it and all that other stuff. Uh, the reason I think there's a lot of other somewhat relevant altcoins out there is just because it's so new and people don't realize what's going on yet. Right. Um, the, uh, and, and here's the thing about all this, though, because I think he's wrong, obviously, about saying that, like, well, you just create more cryptocurrencies and and therefore, you know, it's not really scarce. Because of because it's not fungible, but this is where I don't really blame him that much, because you have all these people saying like oh, it's a free market, and if you don't like what Bitcoin or this other cryptocurrency is doing, you can just create your own. And so there's this idea that like and and with the ICO craze, the people are that and and I fell into this trap at one point before I started understanding this stuff better and saying like oh this is a great free market success that you you can if you don't like what's going on you can just go off and do your own thing. And it's like, the, yes, you can. And there's nothing like, there's no principles, ethical principles that you're violating by doing that necessarily. Um, but you're not adding any, anything of value most of the time. Would, would there be just to kind of, you know, what if someone tried to make copper money? Right. Well, I mean, someone did try to do that. Right. Is that a, not a good analogy? Like why? Sure. I mean, someone just said, like, instead of accepting gold, I'll accept copper. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that then decrease the value of gold? I guess it depends on how many if people start, start using right. it. And that's kind of the point with the cryptos is anyone can make them. doesn't mean they have any value or they're taking away from Bitcoin. Right. So I think that's. Yeah, I, I think this is one based on – there's a lot of ignorance in this one just because it's – I don't mean that as as like trying to insult Schiff or anyone else. It's just that if you don't understand that, that just because someone can start up another altcoin doesn't mean that, that anyone's going to even look at it. Use it or – yeah, it, it doesn't de – it, yeah. And again, we're still early on, and there hasn't been much pressure put on many of these these altcoins or Bitcoin yet to have like a like what we talked about two episodes ago with if there was a proof of work attack uh, put on these things. Um, 
just about every other thing out there other than Bitcoin would just instantly like die collapse. Yeah. yeah. Under, under the pressure of something like that. So um, let's, let's talk about uh, just being able to, to roll up another cryptocurrency when people start getting a little bit more uh, aggressive with, with attacks on right. networks and see what can hold up and what can't. And I really think if that starts happening, you're not going to be see, being, seeing people put as much money into these altcoins because it's going to become extremely obvious to them that the security model they have is all smoke and mirrors. And the only reason that it's still holding its value or still providing quote unquote utility for them is because no one has decided to attack them yet. Right. And that's not a very good position you want to be in. It's like, uh, it's like having gold and, and, and leaving it out on your front step and be like, this is great. This is a great place to store it because no one walked by and noticed it yet. And so they could just walk up and take it. So. All right. Why don't I read till the end? Yeah. Although I want to say you brought up the copper thing. Um, yeah. One of the things that I, I, I would like to see to, to try to, because someone did try to use copper as money before. And all it did was it just, since he was, buying it up it just showed the market that there was more demand for it and so people that were producing it just started producing more because um copper is not that difficult to to go out and get but one thing i would like to see challenge that because it, it might change kind of the game with that the ability to produce them is is using tractors as money uh because everyone loves them and there's no way that I you could you can have. I want to see if tractors can kind of beat the stock to flow uh, ratio idea that Safety and Moose talks about. That I think that, that there's just well, going to be an infinite demand to. I do to, see to I, go after the an infinite supply. I mean, I do see some problems with just the properties of tractors that might make it tough to buy something like say a candy bar. Um, that I think tractors and, and tractor advocates would have to work out and come up with a solution on how they would trade, um, you know, for a candy bar. Well, you just obviously have smaller tractors or tractor parts. Like, just open up your uh, your tractor pull catalog, and you'll be just you'll just be like, look at all these parts. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, well, I don't see where exactly. the problem is. Someone will get that. Um, wow. They should. They should. So anyway, as the World Gold Council notes, cryptocurrency has had some remarkable periods of performance, but has also seen massive haircuts during some periods and has failed during periods when it should have thrived. For instance, you just hold your breath there. For instance... <laughs> It failed as a hedge as the market tanked in 2018, behaving more like a risk asset. It was down on par with tech stocks, falling 55% in the fourth quarter, along with the stock market. Meanwhile, gold was up significantly in that same period. While Bitcoin and other cryptos may have some appeal for some investors, it is clearly not a replacement for precious metals, period. End of blog post. You got anything? Yeah. Um. Well, I think this is, I mean, kind of what I think is what we said earlier is gold's more liquid. Gold's been around. If you're afraid of a collapse tomorrow, it's not a bad idea to have gold. If you're looking long term, I think crypto, I think Bitcoin is better. Right. Um, um I'm I'm pulling up charts because I want to. He's talking about cryptocurrencies. I don't know that he's specifically talking about Bitcoin. If you look at that market as a whole, uh, I'll bet you all those altcoins died during that period. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them still have something there, but all right. I, I mean, you okay. can. Bitcoin so, is certainly down since 2017. Right, but I mean, you're you're cherry picking the the top of the the spike and it's not like that was the first time bitcoin spiked in price ever right i mean 
we've seen it happen all the time. And every time it happens, people say, this is the end of Bitcoin. It dropped down too much. I mean, people look at it and they say, oh, Bitcoin crashed all the way down to to $5,000 after $20,000. Well, where was it before the run-up? $600? So, right. I mean, I'm, I pulled up a Bitcoin chart and going back two years, May the 5th, 2017, the price of Bitcoin, uh, I'm losing, was uh, what's called $1,600. And now it's $5,800. All right, so I'm looking at the gold chart now. And two years ago, the price of gold was about $1,225. And right now it's $1,282 per ounce. So over the last two years, you tell me what has performed better. Uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah. By about a factor of three. Um, let's go back five years. Actually, and, wait, and how, gold, wait, what did you say Bitcoin went up to? It's a bigger than three factor. I'm saying with the price now. Yeah, but it went from wait. So it went from twelve hundred to five thousand. Did I say twelve hundred? I don't know what you said. Uh, Sixteen hundred. Sixteen. I can't do. Six, 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 I can't six, six, do. So all right. So it tripled. Bitcoin. It went up by. So Bitcoin went up by three x. Gold didn't go up by one x. Oh. Oh yeah. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's. It's yeah. It's so it's a, like a very large exponentially la larger. I mean, we're talking a huge difference. And go back five years, and and gold has actually lost a slight amount of value. And gold, I mean, I'm looking at the five year price of gold per ounce, and it's gone. What's this? Uh, in two years, in 2014, it went from 1300 down to 1050, and then in six months, it went up to 1350 an ounce. And then another six months later, it dropped to 1150. And then it spiked up in about nine months back to 1350, dropped in a quarter to 1250 to start 2018. And then it jumped right back up to 1350. And then in the middle of 2018, it dropped down below 1200. And then it spiked back up to about 1325 in the beginning of 2019 and has lost about uh, 50 bucks per ounce. Since yeah. the beginning of so 2019. So it's, I mean, it's like relatively stable. Like if you put your money in it, you know, you're going to be, you're fairly confident you'll be able to sell it for about what you bought it in that range. I think that's fair to yeah. say. It, it, it certainly is volatile, but not nearly as volatile as Bitcoin. Sure. However, yeah. right, right, right. You bought Bitcoin pretty much at any period and just held it unless you bought it at like the one peak. Uh, you're much better off putting your money in Bitcoin than gold. If you want to yeah. cherry pick, we can cherry pick. And and let's not, I, I just want to, I'm just saying this, not to say that Bitcoin is not volatile because it clearly is volatile, but over the long term, Bitcoin has appreciated in value despite these, these spikes and these drop-offs, which anyone who's been in Bitcoin for more than a year, right, or more than two years, I guess, kind of understands that that's kind of where, this thing is at but if you look over the price of gold over 10 years i mean it's not it's also not susceptible it's also not unsusceptible to these run-ups and these drop-offs because sure. 10 years ago gold was trading it looks like a little bit over 900 dollars an ounce it spiked up to 1800 and it dropped almost back to to a thousand dollars so it lost about half of its value almost half its value um over four years so and then what it, would it, happen and it, Moving up a, a little bit. So, what think, happened yeah. if you bought Bitcoin in 2010? You know, like we could do this all day. Right, right. And so, overall, I just pulled up a 30 year chart for gold. And, and for the first, from, uh, I don't know where that date, that's not 30. I guess, wow, man, I was going to say they're showing like 1990. That's not 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> But 1990, I mean, 1990 to 2000, the price of gold overall fell a little bit. And then between 2003 to... Is that real or nominal? Uh, Who's the factor of inflation? Um, I don't know. I would imagine that it's nominal. Because I'm just on gold. So that's, price, even, that's even a bigger loss. Right. 
and then and then it had its it ran up from what's that like 300 dollars an ounce around 2000 up to 1800 in 2012 or so so i mean again i'm not trying to criticize gold too much. No, but let's like but, if let's you want to cherry over. pick certain por parts, go for it. It's just not right. going to work in your favor. Yeah, let's let's just not overstate um, what's going on here. And you look at, I mean, if you look at a chart, I just pulled up the all data, so it's like from nineteen early seventies. Overall, if you bought Bitcoin, you know, forty years ago, or if you bought gold forty years ago, so, so that would be impressive. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing really well with it. Um, what if you bought Bitcoin 10 years ago? Yeah, you're making, yeah. You're doing amazing. okay. Right. So, I mean. That's like, and that's the point. I mean, it just is what it is. Like, look at it. Gold is not, we're not trashing. I don't think we are trying to trash gold necessarily. It's there. It will be there for, you know. A while it's not going anywhere you'll be able to trade it but i think at least my point and i pretty sure you agree is we're looking in the long run what would hold up better as money we know gold won't hold up better as money because it was used as money and now it's not right exactly i mean so we're just trying to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples here and and because the way that some people talk about gold as being stable and everything, you would expect the price not to really change much. But as I was shown, especially just like in the in the two or five year chart, it's gone up by gone up and down by a, a good chunk of its value. Not like Bitcoin, where it's like you know going up ten times in a year. But I mean, if you lose thirty percent of your investment over six months. That's not, yeah. that's not a small, that's not small potatoes. Sure. So we just want to make sure that we're, uh, you know, and he's also selling gold, so he's not going to sure. And the one thing at the bottom of this article, does it have that average? Does it have the same advertisement for you as it does for me? <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin accepted at shift gold. <laughs> so, so I will say this because on Twitter, someone, showed that ad and said like dude you have an ad you accept gold here and he was he said well actually we don't really accept bitcoin i forget what service they use but um you can quote unquote pay with bitcoin but the the little middleman they use converts uh, at the dollars right so they're uh, apparently they're not seeing um okay they're not seeing the bitcoin which that's fine yeah um i'm not gonna He's still putting it out there. Right. So it's just, you know, I, I don't know. It's um, just funny. I mean, you, you kind of. I wouldn't be shocked if Peter Schiff is holding some Bitcoin either. Sure. Um, but whatever. I mean, he's holding plenty of gold. I know that. Right. And I'm sure, <laughs> you know, I'm sure he's not going to be hurting. No. At any point. And, and for someone like him. I don't know when Bitcoin's going to really take take the world by storm and, and become money and everything. I don't know if that's going to be 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. Uh, I hope it's sooner rather than later. But the beauty about it is, is that Peter Schiff and other people can talk about how much they think Bitcoin's stupid all they want. But it's, they're going to adopt it. Mm -hmm. There's no way they're not going to once once the time is right for it so um that's why i i'm so bullish about bitcoin and what it can do is that i don't have to worry about like lecturing people necessarily about uh why i think bitcoin's a good uh investment and good for money because people are just gonna use it adopt it because it's gonna be better for them just like it has in the past with when Cyprus did a, a the government seized 10% of people's assets in the banks and people said, well, I'm not going to put up with that. And they bought Bitcoin to shield their, uh, shield their wealth. Just like we say all the time, 
with this kind of uh, cypherpunk thing where we say the technology is going to make the government obsolete. No one had to sit there and explain to people why uh, the market is a better way to serve the needs of your fellow man. And so relying on the government to hand out tokens or licenses to be able to, to uh, provide a service isn't good in order for people to stop using taxis and start using Ubers. Right. And the same thing's going to apply with Bitcoin becoming money and that people are just going to recognize that it's a better way to store their wealth and uh, help them own their money. Uh, because right now, I mean, just, just look at all these. Uh, uh, the fact that you have your money in the bank and the fact that banks are not letting people send money to uh, Bitcoin exchanges shows that you don't actually own your money if you put your money in a bank. Correct. Because they can determine, they're like, oh, no, we don't want you to send it there. That happened with my uh, online poker back in the day. Right. But with Bitcoin, that's different. It, you own the keys. You own the Bitcoin. You control where it goes. And that's what on online poker went to. And especially if, right. And especially if uh, a lot of these banks or payment processors or other things start, especially with the uh, all the social media stuff and people getting all up in arms about what someone tweets something politically incorrect and now they lost their way to make money. I mean, those people are going to start looking to Bitcoin because it, it's, uh, it can kind of defeat those things. So there are, there are many uses for it um, or many benefits for it. If there's one use, it's money. <laughs> well, many uses you could buy tractors, you could buy fruitcake, you could buy whatever you want. Tons of fruitcake and tractors, yes. So that should be the metric. We should do uh should figure out how much how much fruitcake <coughs> each Bitcoin's worth. Price it and yeah, price it in fruitcake. And are we gonna have like a stand like a Claxton fruitcake or uh no, the Rollo fruit cake because yeah, I I, I kind of have my own, I kind of have my own recipe now for it and I'm gonna make it oh this will be a good way to uh to uh, shill Childerberg so Childerberg June eighth and 9th at Black Rock Park in Texas next to or around Lake Buchanan as we had uh Jake from Taste Anarchy on uh, the podcast last week he's uh, organizing Childerberg one and come down hang out with other liberty-minded folks and have the time of your life and i will be bringing fruitcake there share with everyone and uh now, are you trying to get people to go or trying to keep people away with that ad uh i don't understand the question okay i think you did uh, i don't <laughs> so um I do believe that all of the uh, camping spots on the on the campground we're going to be at have been accounted for and taken up, but um, there are other nearby camping areas and also some towns nearby with hotels, and you can make other arrangements. So the fact that there are there aren't any more uh, camp spots left, uh, do not let that stop you from going. Uh, this would be great if we made this into uh, just absolute mayhem. Mm -hmm. And have way too many people there. Yeah, and let's make it an annual John because yeah, I can't go this year. Is it because I mean I can I can send you some fruit cake. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I did like that fruit cake actually. So. It was good. Yeah, you know, so there's some there's some people are making it, and you want to send some, I will eat it. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how much I make. I've got to secure some ingredients that aren't easy to come by this time of year. Hmm. Fruitcake is not a uh, a June baking event, typically. But we'll make it work. You know what? I, you know what's pretty neat? And maybe this will... I don't want this to be the free market success story because I have a, a, another one. But before the internet was around and I could go and like find certain ingredients because it, it uses like the, the candied cherries and candied... Uh, pineapple of different colors like certain stores would bought would sell that around christmas time because that's when people make and eat fruitcake when, person, when person makes and eats fruitcake 
a monopsony. <laughs> yes. So when uh like for me, if I if I tried to do this 15 years ago before the internet was as prevalent as it was, it would be a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive to do it. Cause now if I can't find something at, at the food store or I didn't like save a bunch from when I bought it before, um, it would be a real pain in the butt to, to source some of these ingredients, but certainly. So with that, all right. Uh, did you have anything else to talk about with Bitcoin or no, let's, uh, let's do a free market success story. Yeah. So, um, my aunt is uh, downsizing out of her house and she has getting rid of a lot of stuff. Uh, one of these things was my, uh, my grandparents dining room set. And so, you know, we like to keep kind of some of this stuff in the family. So she asked if I wanted it and I did cause I did not have a dining room set in my house. Um, only three and a half years at my house. It's, you know, whatever. Uh, but I was waiting for a situation like this. So, uh, one. yep. And so she lives about two hours from me. So, um, I didn't know how, how much stuff I was going to take, how easily, uh, you, you could take it apart. So I didn't, I didn't want to risk going down there with, uh, you know, family members, larger trucks and not having enough room. So what I did was I, I just rented a U-Haul and, uh, so I, what you can do now with U-Hauls, this is the first time I, I, personally ever did the running myself for a u-haul but you can uh you can do it all online you know uh sign up and, and get your truck what you want and and then you don't even have to when you pick up the truck and drop it off you don't even need people there anymore they have an app that does like the check-in for you that they have a combination a combination lock on the uh the back of the truck and you can They'll send you what the combination is when you verify that you're there and, and you're picking up the truck and you have your order number and everything and all that checks out. So they send you the, the lock combination. You open it up, you got the keys in there and you go. And then when you drop the truck back off, um, you don't need a person there either. You go on the online and you start the checkout process. They ask you to take a picture of the odometer and the fuel gauge so they can verify uh, the miles it drove and, and that you're putting the uh, amount of gas uh, that you you're returning with the same amount of gas that you took it with. Uh, and then they, you have to take a couple pictures of the inside, making sure that it's in good condition. And so you can, and then they have the, the drop off box for the keys. So with this is convenient because I was doing all this on a, on a Sunday and a lot of these places aren't open on Sundays the place where I picked the truck up uh, was open, but they were, they opened up after uh, I wanted to pick the truck up. And then the place I dropped it off just wasn't open on Sundays at all. So just some technology out there that, that makes life a little bit easier and, and more convenient. And it would have been, I mean, I could have, I think I had the truck technically for two days rented, so I could have returned it today, but then I would have had to bother someone to, Hey, can you go, drop me off at, uh, or drive with me to drop this truck off and drive me back to my house and you drive back to where you're going. Or even I would maybe get an Uber, but that, that incurs an expense to me. So I had, I had people with me helping move this stuff. So it was more convenient for me to do everything on a Sunday when they're not going to be open, but they make arrangements so that you can still do what you want to do on your time. So, uh, awesome experience and uh, worth every penny for me. So just another little thing that, that's yeah. out there, that technology, not the governments would never say like, oh, let's let's direct resources to, to solve this problem that we didn't even know was a problem. Yeah, and I don't know how that would work before the app. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could probably drop the truck off and leave the key, but then they're not inspecting it. I, I don't know how that would work. Do you have to, would you have had to wait till they were open to go back? Yeah, I mean, because they would want to. You want to be able to verify that the gas and and yeah, that no one's ripping someone off because you exactly. can go back and say like, oh, well, your gas was, tank was empty, or the oh, you left the truck a mess and now we're going to charge you for it. And you're like, no, it wasn't. But you took pictures. I mean, it's it's there. There's not much of a. Uh, I mean, I I doubt they're going to doctor because here's the thing. It, it's a lot of these places are. Um, 
it's not like the company U-Haul owns and operates these places. There's a lot of, uh, franchisees. Yes. And so they're, they're kind of independent, but U-Haul wants to maintain its brand. And so they want to make sure that, that their franchisees are, are behaving well. And also that the customers are not putting their franchisees in a, uh, in a bad spot by, um, coming back with empty gas tanks and dirty trucks and damaged trucks and everything. So it's no little cool thing. Yep. So uh, with that, again, the show notes page is mcflugel.com slash 143. You can check out libertymugs.com through that link or just type it directly into your browser. And also uh, you'll see links to some of the stuff we talked about some relevant stuff. I, I definitely check out, uh, would recommend checking out the, uh, Stefan Lavera podcast with safety Dean and moose talking about, uh, gold and its status right now. Uh, I tried to summarize it as best I could, but I tried to take like three minutes for what was a, uh, probably an hour long podcast. And, uh, I think safety Dean's a, a really smart guy who, who understands this stuff really well. And I also linked to his book, the Bitcoin standard, which I cannot recommend enough talks about money and why he believes that Bitcoin will become money. So, all right, Slappy. Cool. That's all I had. Thanks for listening, everyone. And catch we'll you catch next you next week. week. Peace.